Good evening. It's a real pleasure always to welcome you to the service of evening prayer on Saturday. Tomorrow we shall be observing the fifth Sunday after Trinity, and I shall be speaking on the subject of the God whose hand is over everything. Please plan to join us at 9.30 uh, via Facebook or uh, YouTube. We'll be live streaming on Facebook. and. We're glad, we're glad to have you along uh, this evening and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We have in person uh, today Eileen Kerr on the organ, Jim Noblet, and Reverend Ron Wickender joining me. I'm Victor Morgan. I'm the rector here. And again, I welcome you. And we begin as we sing hymn 177. Uh, Softly now the light of day fades upon my sight away. Free from care, free from labor, free, Lord, I would commune with thee.
Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Page 23 in the prayer book. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have fallen too much, much to the vices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises, declare unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant the most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of the sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and love, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We sit for the Psalms. Psalms for the evening of the 11th day, beginning on page 411 in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning with Psalm 59. Deliver me from mine enemies, O God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. O deliver me from the wicked doers, and save me from the bloodthirsty men. For lo, they lie waiting for my soul. The mighty men are gathered together against me without any offense or fault of me, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Arise thou, therefore, to help me, and behold. Stand up, O Lord God of hosts, thou God of Israel, to visit all the heathen. And be not merciful unto them that offend a malicious wickedness. They go to and fro in the evening. They grin like a dog and run about through the city. Behold, they speak with their mouth, and swords are in their lips. For who doth hear? But thou, O Lord, shalt have them in derision, and thou shalt laugh all the haven to scorn. My strength will I ascribe unto thee, for thou art the God of my refuge. God showeth me his goodness plenteously, and God shall let me see my desire upon my enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget it. But scatter them abroad among the people, and put them down, O Lord, our defense. For the sin of their mouth, and for the words of their lips, 
they shall be taken in their pride. And why? Their talk is of cursing and lies. Consume them in thy wrath. Consume them that they may perish. And know that it is God that ruleth in Jacob and unto the ends of the world. And in the evening they will return, grin like a dog, and will go out to sea. They will run here and there for meat, and grudge if they be not satisfied. As for me, I will sing of thy power, and will praise thy mercy betimes in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trial. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For thou, O God, art my refuge and my merciful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, thou hast cast us out, and scattered us abroad. Thou hast also been displeased. O oh, turn thee unto us again. Thou hast moved the land and divided it. Heal the sores thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast shown thy people heavy things. Thou hast given us a drink of deadly wine. Thou hast given us a token for such as fear thee, that they may triumph because of the truth. Therefore, with thy beloved delivered, Help me with thy right hand and me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice and divide Shechem and beat out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also in the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Eden will I cast out my shoe. Philistia, be thou glad of me. Who will leave me in this strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Us not thou cast us out, O God? Wilt not thou, O God, go out with our hosts? O oh, be there our help in trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God will we do great acts, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hear my crying, O God. Give ear unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I call upon thee, when my heart is in heaviness. O oh, set me up upon the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been my hope and a strong tower for me against the enemy. I will dwell in thy tabernacle forever, and my trust shall be under the covering of thy wings. For thou, O Lord, hast heard my desires, and hast given an inheritance unto those that fear thy name. Thou shalt grant the king a long life, that his years may endure throughout all generations. He shall dwell before God forever. O oh, prepare thy loving mercy and faithfulness, that they may preserve him. So will I always sing praise unto thy name, that I may daily perform my vows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the twelfth verse of the first chapter of Ruth. Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. 
And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass, when they were coming to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Here ended the first lesson. The Magnificat, a song of Mary, page 26 in the prayer book. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Here beginneth the 16th verse of the 17th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred up in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him into Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world of all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands, 
as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And he hath made of one blood of all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they may feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere where to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which will he judge the world in righteousness, that by man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he raised them from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius, the Aeropagite, and the woman named Damaris, and others with them. Here ended the second lesson. The Not Committus, the Song of Simeon, page 28. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God of all Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rust and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon this whole land, and so rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and all others in authority, that they, knowing whose ministers they are, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all the people, duly considering whose authority they bear, may faithfully and obediently honor them according to thy blessed word and ordinance through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray for all police officers, firefighters, and other emergency service personnel who remain on the job at this time. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for medical doctors, nurses, health care workers, and all who work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for these United States that violence, hatred, discord, and prejudice may be put to flight and the blessings of peace, civil discourse, goodwill, and trust may be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those in this parish family who celebrate birthdays during this coming week. As they grow in years, so may they grow in grace. Anna Brown, Roger Johnson, Robbie Muschamp. For those who celebrate wedding anniversaries, that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace. Richard, Richard and Roanne Peck. Jim and Ruby Truska, Bob and Jinan Parrish. For those who serve in the armed services of our country, especially those who have connections to this parish church. Wesley Ryan McIntosh, Christian Wade Newman, Kyle Morgan, Sam Soon, Matthew Muse, Jake Baker, Mark Rodriguez. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for those who have requested our prayers. We pray for name by name for Neil and Priscilla McDonald, Bob Bradley, and Anna Brown. Gordon Rainier, Elizabeth Ann White, Tim Higdon, Rosemary Gore, Connie Parks, Dot Washburn, Rose Brass, Evelyn Bryant, Eileen Kerr, Poot and Gwen Skelton, Jim and Ruby Tresca, Bruce Birkinshaw, Pat and Sharon Daring, Tom Hofer, Ray Pickett, Ann Thomason, Jane Coster, Marilyn Seiler, Don Hess, Marilyn Kiffmiller, Roseanne Johnston, Larray Hertzie, Andy Love Cooper, and Jackie Lumpkin. Lord, in your mercy. Your Dear Lord. Lord. Say together the general thanksgiving, page 33. Almighty God. Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, 
preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfaithfully thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 